Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Once again, and we are continuing our discussion on interior point methods. Yesterday, we started our discussions, gave a very basic idea of what we are supposed to do, and we wrote down the KKT conditions. And we are just attempting to now solve the KKT conditions because solution of a KKT conditions would give me the required minimum. In fact, the KKT condition solves two problems. By solving the KKT conditions, I not only solve the primal I also solve the dual. So, these methods that we will soon start doing they are called primal dual interior point methods, because they are jointly solving both the primal and dual interior point, because they remain inside the interior of the feasible set. Now, let us observe that if I do look at the KKT conditions in the page before this one, I can write it down in a more standard equation form that is I can write this KKT condition as a system in this form. A transpose this, this I will very soon tell you what I why I am writing this, where x and s are greater than equal to 0 x when you are when you have a vector x and you are writing a corresponding capital x this symbolizes a diagonal matrix whose diagonal consists of all the elements of the vector x all the components of the vector x and this s is also a diagonal matrix consisting of all now an e is the vector 1 1 1 and of course, you can see that x s e is nothing, but the vector is is nothing, but the vector x 1 s 1 dot 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 x n s n, because all of them are equal to 0 right that is a complementary slackness condition. So, this is in R n, this is in R m, this is in R n. So, basically my vector is in R n plus m plus n, which is also R 2 n plus m. So, any element here any element of this form can be viewed as an element here of course, it is an element in this space R n plus m plus n that is or R n cross R m cross R n. Now, I have to solve this equation and what do you mean by Newton's method for solving this equation. Newton's method we have learnt also in calculus right. Newton's method comes in the very first course in calculus, calculus 1 in most of uh, our engineering colleges, most of our universities when you learn calculus 1 you learn Newton's method. Newton's method here is, so what we are going to look into is a function f from R n to R n and we are going to try to find out, find an x. So, if I have this equation my question is to find an x such that f of x is equal to 0, such that this is occurring. Now, the Newton's method that you learn in the first year of your studies is for a function from r to r where n is equal to 1 and there you have f x equal to 0. If you take up your calculus books, you will see that this Newton method 
works on a iteration scheme given as follows. The k plus 1 th iteration is given in terms of the k th iteration as So, x plus x at the k plus 1 th iteration is the k th iteration x k is the k th iteration x k minus f x k by f dash x k. So, I can write it bit more cautiously. F dash x k inverse as to the power minus 1 into f x k. Now, when I have the situation from f from R n to R n, can I write down the Newton's iteration scheme? In this case, I have n and my derivative would be nothing but the Jacobian. See that here the derivative is not equal to 0, because here if the derivative is 0, this will be meaningless. right? This is of course, we are trying to find for a differentiable function. These are all differentiable functions. This is something I should have mentioned. So, these are all differentiable functions. If you look at the function that we have written down for the KKT scheme, that is also a differentiable function. Now, how do I look into this thing and try to uh, you know I how do I look into this iteration scheme for R to R and try to get an idea for R n to R. Now, here you can use, a, use your intuition of course, I would leave you to mathematically actually write rigorously write down the scheme but let us just use for fun use the intuition. Now, for this the derivative is nothing but a Jacobian mapping and we assume that there is an inverse and then f of x k, but who told me that the Jacobian would have an inverse that is the whole question. So, how does, so if I write it much more if the Jacobian was not having the inverse then possibly I could have written the whole thing down in this fashion. So, this essentially is the Newton iteration scheme. So, this is the basic Newton iteration. And this one is when the Jacobian has an inverse, the Jacobian matrix has an inverse. So, when you have functions from R n to R n and R is bigger than 1, hey sorry n is bigger than 1, then your derivative becomes the Jacobian matrix. So, I am sure that you have heard about Jacobian matrix in your basic calculus courses. So, what do you take? take if you look at this function f. So, let me just give a little bit idea about the Jacobian in case you have forgotten it. So, you take this function f x say let it say r 2 to r 2. So, you have f 1 x you have f 2 x. Now, you the Jacobian j f x is nothing but you write the gradient vectors as row vectors grad of f 1 and grad of f 2 write them as row vectors and put them as rows. So, that is exactly your Jacobian matrix. Now, once I know this, how do I adapt this thing to my own system, to my own system of Karush Kuntakar inequalities. So, for our case, for our case it would be like this, the Jacobian of f at x our case 
let me emphasize it is our case now. So, we are applying the Newton scheme in our system. Now, x k plus 1 minus x k minus 1, I should have written, written x k, ok, I will write x k. If you, if you are not convinced, it is better to write x k and then later on make it much more simpler. So, let me write the scheme j f x k y k s k this thing multiplied into this vector now x k plus 1 minus x k y k plus 1 minus y k and s k plus 1 minus s k and this must be equal to minus f of x y s. This is your Newton scheme for k k t conditions. Of course, you have to have that uh, what, what is that called that x and s has to be greater than 0. This is something you have to keep in mind. So, this is the Newton scheme for k k t system, but there is something interesting. Now, if sorry this would be k, uh, I had made a mistake, this is x k y k s k right. Now, so if x k y k and s k is in the strict primal feasible cross strict feasible strict F D E or the equivalent problem. Then what would happen? This y k s k is actually here. Then what would happen? Then how do I write down the k k d system? Then the Newton scheme becomes and that is what we will have in most cases, because we will have a feasible point which is in the interior. Now, our that would allow us to simplify the Newton scheme and the Newton scheme would now look as. So, I will just put delta x k. So, this difference is I will write as delta x k. This difference I will write as delta y k, this difference I will write as delta s k and this. So, once I have this, this would uh, tell me this is nothing but because it is so a x is equal to b and a transpose y plus s equal to c. So, 0, 0, but only thing you would have is that this I do not know what will happen, because it is strict the product is of course, something. So, now this is this is the equation I am supposed to solve, this is the. So, if I solve this equation, so my new x k plus 1 Once I solve del x k del y k del s k, if I find these values, then x k plus 1, y k plus 1, s k plus 1 can be found by this following line search iteration scheme, which is x k y k s k. Sometimes what is done, we just do not add this to del x k, though we have made that to be the sign, you can actually add these things. But sometimes from the point of view of practice, it is useful to have some additional parameter. So, this is giving you the Newton direction, right. These, these solutions of these are called Newton directions of the KKD system. But then, so if I perform a line search along the Newton direction, for some search parameter, I will take alpha between 0 and 1, oh sorry, 1 is included. Then I have to see what would happen that if I just join this to x k plus del x k, I might get a point which might not be strictly positive, that is the whole point, it can be in the boundary. The idea is to restrict it inside the feasible set and as a result of which what we have to do is to make take this controlling parameter or line search parameter.
Now, once I know this, what I do this because what I want at the end is x k plus 1 to be strictly bigger than 0 and s k plus 1 to be strictly bigger than 0. So, this alpha has to be chosen in such a way such that this holds and the whole game is how to solve this system. How do I solve this system? So, the whole emphasis in interior point methods is to try to solve this system. So, this will lead us to the story of the central path. So, what we do is that instead of solving the exact KKD system, we would like to solve something called a pot up KKD system, which we just would write down and let us see. So, instead of solving the exact KKD system, where I have x i s i equal to 0 for all i, I would try to solve the following system. x i s i, I said this is equal to tau, that for every x i s i, it should be a number tau, though it, it, is, it is not so easy to find something which will do it. So, in that case, that would give us what is called a central path. So, if I solve this system of equation, what I would get is something called a central path. I keep on changing the tau and what I do is I get a central path. So, I have a I have this feasible polyhedron and I get a central path, which is all the points lying on this path is solution of this system. But when I actually solve this system, I do not get the exact points, I get something nearby. But these nearby points the, the which are the approximate solution of this system cannot be too far off from the central path. It has to be somewhere quite near to the central path and so we will see that we will define certain neighborhood which will push those points in a tube along tube or some sort of uh, uh, set which will for keep, keep the whole points the iterates within certain region of the central path. So, gradually we will force them towards the solution. Now, instead of doing all these things, you might ask me a very important question. Now, you have this particular uh, system for the KKD thing that is, I have written here uh, 0 if, if because I have assumed this, because if you had written here this minus f x k thing here, this thing, this would become minus a transpose y k plus s k minus c k a x k minus b and of course, I am not writing it x s e. I am not writing the details, but now. So, what I am trying to say is that you might ask me in that part you said that okay, this is the scheme that you write when you do not have differentiability, but if you are in the interior will this be differentiable well, sorry will this be invertible. I am writing this scheme when this Jacobian matrix is not invertible. Now, the question is will this particular Jacobian matrix when I take the Jacobian of this map, will it be differentiable if I take that fact that x k y k s k comes from this set and that surprisingly turns out to be yes and that is one of the major results of this whole area. So, this is a very brief idea of this central path which we have given. Now, we will get into a more uh, important issue. We will first write down the following, following important result. And if though we have not done the central path yet in complete uh, detail, we have not we, are not, we have not done the central path yet in complete detail, but we are going to write the following important result. The Jacobian
this is given by this matrix. It is a homework for you to figure out that this is the correct answer, this is the Jacobian. Now, J f x y s is invertible if x is strictly greater than 0, s is strictly greater than 0, this is very very simple. This is very very simple, this whole to proof. So, I will again leave this as homework to you. Now, before we deal with central path in uh, so much details, it is important that we look into this problem slightly more historically. See the interiors doing writing an algorithm being in the interior of a feasible set is not a very new concept. It is a very old concept and you will find in the very old book by Fiaco and McCormick. And what happened is that they revised what is called the barrier, barrier method. And this barrier method was a nice interesting idea where uh, the points which are in the interior are not allowed to move towards the boundary. That is if you are moving towards the boundary the function value would the they create a function called the barrier function whose value would start going towards plus infinity. So, and that is so you would not you would lose interest in minimizing such a function because your idea is just like the penalty function you create the barrier function by combining the constraints and the objective, but you the, you do it in such a way that you your iterates at every stage as you solve the sequence of barrier problems are inside the interior of the feasible set in contrast to the penalty method where you have it in the outside. So, now I am talking about penalty method etcetera which I have not spoken about which could be in a separate course, but you need not get too much worried about it. What I am telling is that there was this historical method it was around 1960s or I guess 1966 or something like that if I am not very wrong. So, uh, this people lost interest in com, uh, this idea completely it was a theoretical idea with a nice convergence proof everything, but suddenly when interior point methods were being looked into after Kalmakar's revolution when people started looking more deeply into the interior point methods. Many uh, researchers like Michael Todd, Mike uh, Jim Renegar they figured out that there is a deep connection between the barrier method and the Newton scheme. So, the barrier method will play an extremely fundamental role in interior point methods for linear programming. So, we will define what is called a logarithmic barrier function and we would like to show that this barrier function is intimately linked with the solution of this Newton system of equation or the solution of the KKD system. So, it is intimately linked. So, barrier method is linked to it. So, if you solve if you optimize or minimize a barrier function in this particular case with certain barri barrier properties with, with certain type of barrier functions you are actually solving the KKD system. So, it is very important that this link be established because this is a deep link and this actually illuminates the whole mechanism of this interior point techniques, because the barrier methods were the first class of interior point techniques. So, our standing assumption Now, you might say that oh what are you writing this, uh, this could be phi, this could be empty yeah that you can figure out examples that this could be empty. Uh, I will not give you the example right way, I will give you the example after I do a bit of the subject. So, for, for this current moment let us assume that you have these things given to you 
and now we are trying to build up this uh, link with the barrier function. So, we have something called a logarithmic barrier function. You will understand why it is called logarithm, logarithmic barrier function. Because you have a so for all x in the feasible set, all x in F naught P define the function So, this is a constraint and then the x greater than equal to strictly greater than equal to 0 that constraint is pushed into the l n means log natural. So, if you are getting confused l n x is log to base e. So, x i's are all positive because I have taken them from the strictly feasible set and this is my logarithmic barrier function because I have used a log. So, this is what is called the log barrier function. So, usually it is known in the literature as log barrier function. Mu here is called the barrier parameter. And mu is strictly bigger than 0. So, it is important that if I want to optimize this problem I would like to know its uh, gradient and hesion because that is what is done in standard optimization problems that you because you will do unconstant optimize not really unconstant optimization, but you are basically looking at these problems because you are you want to solve this problem over this particular set which is an open set because you are in the interior of the feasible set you are not you cannot be on the boundary. So, this is an open set. So, it will be just same as unconstant minimization. Now, if you optimize over whole R n and optimize over an open set in R n your optimality conditions are same. Of course, it is not so simple to say that okay, optimality conditions are same how they are same that would again involve in one to deep uh, more deeper discussions about the geometry of the sets the associated tangent and normals and so we will not get into all these things, but just listen to the following thumb rule. If I have an open set in R n my optimality conditions are just like unconstrained ones. Now, I also want to determine the nature of this problem whether it is convex or not this is convex of course, this is also convex. So, this problem is convex. So, what sort of convex is it is it strictly convex or strongly convex. So, some, some better property than just convexity. So, you see here I would have you know what is x inverse because here all the capital A in the capital X is the diagonal matrix consisting of x 1 x 2 x n on all all these elements are positive. So, x inverse is nothing but a matrix of this form. that is all. And of course, you can see figure out this one. So, you can figure out this at home at your leisure time. So, this actually means nothing but x 1 square x 2 square. So, this is P d positive definite. So, this hesion matrix is positive definite on f naught p. So, this shows that this function again go back to your old old notes old our very beginning studies that because of this is a positive hesion is positive definite this function is strictly convex. So, phi is strictly convex on f naught p. So, our conclusion here is the log barrier function phi mu is strictly convex on f naught p. Now, what about the dual function? So, now, now the next natural question is uh, what about uh, this uh, dual problem? Do can we construct a barrier function for the dual problem? The answer is yes. So, let us construct a log barrier function 
not for DPE, but for DP just because they that is where the strictness comes in. So, you, so you will have something like this y is because we are talking about dual variable, this is the dual objective. Here we add and not subtract because we write it in that form because I have written l n of c i minus a i y. A i is one row vector, a, a i is the here a i y is a vector denoting the first row of the matrix A, uh, sorry, the first column of the matrix A. So, it is A transpose Y is if you compute out A transpose Y. So, A transpose means if you multiply, so the first column, the ith column of A, the ith column of the matrix A is denoted by A i. So, if you do A transpose Y, if you compute out this matrix, this matrix consists of the if you compute out this matrix computation this is a vector A transpose Y and this A transpose Y is a vector which whose every whose ith position consists of this particular real number. So, but this is strictly less than C i because Y is a dual variable. So, for all Y in F naught D I have defined it like this i is from 1 to n, okay. but there are n columns. So, a i a 1 a 2 a n are n columns of the matrix A. Okay, that is it. Now, what about this guy? Uh, does it uh, have anything to do with, uh, does it have any nicer properties like convexity and all those things. Okay, let us compute out this. So, this will give me something of this form, which you can compute out. Now, this is negative definite. Because if you look at this one, these matrices, this mu is positive, and if you look at these matrices, and because y is positive here, this is positive. Now, a, a i a i transpose, these are uh, because of course I am assuming that a i is all they all of them cannot be 0. AIs are some of the AIs are non zero. So, the rank assumption tells us that the using the rank assumption that rank of A is M, you can actually prove that the product the, that this matrix is negative definite. So, prove this in the homework prove grad square phi tilde mu y to be negative definite on F naught t. So, this is okay. So, these are some facts which let us keep. Now, what is the relation between these barrier functions and the KKT conditions? Let us just have a look and we will try to end our uh, discussion today with this very, very fundamental theorem and, and we will start our discussion about the central path tomorrow and also about that also we will discuss a bit about the primal dual framework and all these things. So, and how, and how to exactly solve the Newton system, we will give you the exact solution of the Newton system. 
So, here we are not going to prove each and everything which is not feasible because of the time constraint in this course. So, we are not going to prove each and every step it is not possible, but give you the major ideas because here we you know we are putting in a some sort of a small capsule because the interior point is a whole course you can the proofs will take a quite a quite a bit of time. So, some proofs would be given not every proof and, but here we will state of the fundamental theorem fundamental result fundamental result on barrier functions. but we will not prove it. See what would happen is that proofs of this would require certain sophistications which might not be available with all the it would need mathematical sophistications which might not be available with all the audience seeing this course. So, keeping in view the mind in keeping in mind the view point of uh, keeping in mind the viewpoint of all the audiences I would like to emphasize that all results now would not be given a proof like we were giving in the very fun first part the very basic part that we are giving proofs of everything, but here we would not be giving proofs of everything we will emphasize the results certain smaller results etcetera of course, we would be proving, but not each and everything. Our idea here is not really to show you that okay, come on how do you uh, how do you solve the or how do you uh, numerically write the algorithms, but give you a very brief idea. So, we will not write down each and every algorithm, we will write down one basic algorithm through which we can test the theory that we have we would develop now, but then we would also give certain more algorithms we will tell their references and you can go and have a look at them. So, let us write down this fundamental theorem to end this course today. So, let us write down the following facts. So, they these are non empty this is known to you. there exists of course, there will be unique minimizer, because because it is strictly strict minimum. If there is a minimizer that should be unique. maximizer so you know i just want to remind you that this one what you have got here this one this shows that this function is actually concave not convex but concave on f not d so uh, you have to maximize a concave function so dual problem is always a maximization game sorry f not p this is f not p this is f not d the system the instead of tau let me put it will be f mu I will write as f mu. See what would happen is that here we will show that if I can minimize the barrier functions I am actually minimizing this problem with this equal to mu. So, if I if I fix up a mu and if I minimize a barrier function then I am actually getting finding a unique solution of this system of equations and that is the important connection because this is what we want to solve. We are not hell bent in solving the KKD condition, but we have to solve this approximate condition and that is very important for us from the practical point of view this is what we have to solve, because we have to be in the central path. So, the as solution of the barrier method 
the barrier functions leads to the generation of the central path. So, that is the beautiful theoretical link. Uh, okay, we will try to give a little bit of proof for this one, because this is very, very fundamental. So, x s x capital S sorry or you can write x s e. Uh, so, this actually means x 1 s 1 equal to mu x 2 s 2 equal to mu. Here I could also write this this part this last part see x s mu e can be written as x s e minus mu e same same thing does not matter. So, this So, let us have these four conditions written down four as a things four statements. We have made four statements and now we are showing that A implies B and B implies A, B implies C and C implies B and hence C implies A and A implies C. So, what we say is that all the above four conditions Are equivalent. That is, if I can solve the log barrier function, then then I am also solving this system. So, give me the mu. So once you know that if I if there is a log solution to the log barrier function, if there is a solution to the unique dual, so what happens is that the solution to the log barrier function and the solution if you have a solution to the log barrier function, even you have a solution to the uh, minimizer of the log barrier and maximizer of this dual uh, log barrier for the dual one, then you are solving this. So, or if you just know that I you, you have found a minimizer on this one, you know that there is a solution to this. So, a solution or the existence of the central path is intimately linked to the solution of these two problems that is minimizing phi mu over this and maximizing phi tilde mu over f naught d. So, this is a very, very important thing. Maybe we will give a scheme of the proof of this tomorrow and then we will uh, move on to the central path and other related issues. So, the idea as I told you again is to move along this central path, start from a point in, in the inside and start moving along the central path. So, so, if I each point on the central path is a unique solution of this system, but the question is that it is very difficult to solve this system. So, the, our idea would be to solve it approximately, but still solve it in such a way, so that I remain near the central path and I can make one step, one step, one step ahead. So, but how do I know? My idea is that I will have to force this tau to go to 0, I have to, I have to force this tau to go to 0. So, at every step I have to whatever new, whatever x i s i I compute the approximate ones, one has to compute this sort of uh, uh, sort of control parameter like this, which is called the duality measure. Basically, I would like to force this duality measure to go to 0. In a, basically, from, from a just very simple point of view, I am forcing this tau to go towards 0. If I, as I make tau smaller and smaller, I keep on, I suppose this is the solution, I am move, then I keep on moving along this central path and go and hit the solution that is that is the basic idea. And so, tomorrow we will start with some brief idea about the proof of this fundamental result on log barrier functions and the KK then the approximate KKD system and then we will go into the other issues. So, we will have the I will have some four or five more lectures on this whole thing. So, we can take it slightly easier and then we will go on to semi definite programming which is almost the end, end of the course. So, we will basically have learned two very important class of convex optimization problems, their algorithms, their deep properties and you will see the semi definite programming is so important, because lot of things come under semi definite programming problems, lot of problems can be modeled as SDP, which cannot be modeled as linear programming problems. So, thank you very much, see you tomorrow.